Hello everyone. <clears throat> Today we're gonna check out the fourth module and that's gonna be initial size. And again, it should be a very small one, so I might also add initial size seated. But we'll see. Let's make a particle system just because I find it easier to explain. Initial size with 1n. There. All right. And there we have it. There is basically only one option. Well, it's a few options, but this is it. Let's start with constant again. If you have a constant of 10 by 10 by 10, the particles will be 10 pixels by 10 pixels big. And it doesn't actually matter if you do 110, because in normal, if the required node is set to PSA square, then only the x axis will be used in initial size, as you can see. But if you change it to rectangle, there, you see that it suddenly became very thin. If I add 50, it will be less than 100, it will be equal on x and y again. So keep that in mind if you want to scale the particle differently on the x and the y axis. All right, let's go back and set it to PSA square for now. Initial size, uh, 50 is good enough. But if you, you can also randomize that. So let's go to uniform, distribution factor uniform. The minimum size will be 10, oh wait, the maximum size will be 100 by 100. Z can be ignored. And the minimum will be one by one. As you can see, there will be a very a variety of different sizes. So the smallest one will be one by one pixel, and the biggest will be one hundred by one hundred pixels. So what if I want to have a bit more control over that, and let's say I only want one hundred by one hundred, and only want one by one at the same time? Then you can enable use extremes. This way, only the biggest and smallest input will be emitted. And it might be really hard to see the very, very small ones. So, you have to take my word for it, I guess. Sorry, 10 by 10. Ah, now I can see them actually. There we go. Very tiny ones. If I disable use extremes again, then you have a variety of sizes again. Uh, constant curve and factor uniform curve aren't really necessary in this case. You probably won't be needing them. And I almost never use them, so explaining them will be quite hard. Alright, since initial size was this easy and this fast, let's go to initial size seated. I'm going to remove the initial size here. Alright, place down initial size seated. There we go. <clears throat> now the seated module is basically identical to the normal initial size one, but um, uh, this module also allow you to add some seat information. So if you have a few seats, then it will pick between those random, and that makes you have more control over what happens each time the emitter gets started. So as is before, let's say the constant. Actually, let's do factor uniform for now, and do a maximum of 100, and a minimum of 10, there. And the parameter name, you actually don't need to name this parameter if you don't use it for blueprints or other kind of stuff. But I tend to name it the same as the name of the emitter, so if this one was called like sparks, then I tend to name this one sparks and in some cases sparks size or something like that. It's up to you of course. Okay. Uh, get seat from instance. I normally don't use that. It's a mostly a blueprint thing. Uh, if you disable it or it doesn't find anything in blueprint it will fall back to the random seats element here. Uh, instance seat is index. Uh, I tend to not use that either. Parameter name, that, well, as I said, that's normally for blueprints. I tend to not touch that unless I need it for a blueprint. And 
yada yada yada. Um, yeah, random seeds. That's where the magic happens. So let's create a few. Like that's six. Um, this is basically seeds. Everyone is a different random. So if I do one, two, three, four, five, and seven, then when I, every time it starts, the initial size is basically anywhere between this. But it's a steady version. So uh, how can I easily explain this? Let's reduce the spawn rate a, bit a lot. So I only do one. Now make it loop for once. There. Uh, come on, why are you not spawning one? Uh, is it that again? 4.12, why are you messing up? There we go. Alright. Let's go back to initial size seed. Make sure that the sizes are correct. Yes. And there we go. At the moment, this random seed is one. And it will always be this big, even though it's random. Well, it's not actually random because there's only one value, but if I add one, additional one, you cannot select between random between this version and that version. So there's a chance that it will actually be really small because, if I'm correct, zero was really small, as you can see. So there's now a chance between zero and one, but it also needs to randomly select between the seed ray. So now it's the big one. And eventually you will also see the small one there. If you increase the spawn rate a little bit. And go back to initial seat. Let's disable the first one. And have it at zero. Okay, it spawns two small ones and a big one. And it will always do that. But if it's one, it will spawn two big ones and a medium, medium one, as you can see. Now if I add an additional seed, which is the zero, it either spawns the two small ones and the big one, there, or the two big ones and the medium one. So every time I add another seed, and this can be anything from zero to anything you want, and it will randomly pick between these. This is handy if you want something random, but still have a bit more control over it. Because there might be instances where a random burst or a random rate of spawning might not give you the required result or the optimum awesome random result. And that's why seed is really handy. It's also handy because if you have a separate new uh, emitter, let's duplicate this one, yes, and you share this initial size C with shift to the other one they both share the same random seats and this can be really handy for other stuff like rotation and that kind of stuff but I'll come back to that when we touch the rotation modules I think that basically explains the seat version minus the blueprint aspect of it so let's add another one and also 12. Now there are four versions that are totally random. At least it picks four versions between those random things. There you go. And yeah, so if what you can do is basically what I do to find very good seeds. Let's say we start over and I duplicate this one. I hide this one and go to seed, delete all of them and add one. Then I just go one, see if that's the uh, the spawn I like. If not, I go to two. If not, I go to three. And if three is the one I like, I actually go to this one and add three. Go back to the second sparks. See if four is something I like. If not, maybe five, maybe six, maybe seven. Oh, I like seven, for instance. And then just add another one here. Seven. Until I have between four and ten different versions depending on what I need. I mean if it's only one then it's not really really needed to get a seed but 
uh, yeah, in this case, eventually you might end up uh, with like a whole array. Let's say 9, then it might be 9, it might be 10, it might be 100, 111, 112, 137, and the last one might be 8008135. You know? So, yeah, this basically explains everything on initial size, initial size seed. I hope that helps a little bit, and you can always ask questions, so be sure to do that if you want to know anything. Alright, take care.